Hi, this is Joy Slap Art Studio, and today we are going to be watercoloring a fall card. And this is my inspiration here. I grab some things, put them on a table. That way we can get inspired by, you know, these are really good magazines to get inspired by. There's lots of fall things in here. And I look at them maybe in the evening before I know I'm going to paint the next day. And this is a, a, a napkin that was painted in watercolor. Um, that's for inspiration. I'm not going to copy somebody else's work, but um, I just kind of put it there because I liked it. And then for my materials, um, I have tracing paper. That's if you know you don't feel comfortable drawing on your own. I've been drawing for many years, so I draw my own usually, but I'm going to show you how to transfer something with tracing paper. Uh, we can use watercolor paper. I use a 140 pound uh, arches. Uh, I use the rough, which is uh, cold press, um, or you can use mixed media, it's cheaper, but it also does an okay job for beginners. Um, my paints were tubes, which I squirted out in my palette, and I have quite a selection. I need to add some more, but that's okay. And I have a couple of brushes here, different sizes, and then my water. Um, this allows me to have three little uh, places where I put water so they're separated, and then some paper towels. A pencil. Now this is about the size we're going to do a 5x7 because I'm actually going to make cards from my fall scene and then put them up for sale. And this is a card that I made from this painting and I did it so that I could just copy it 100%. I usually take it down to the laser printer and do that. So, alright, so let's get started. Okay, now we're ready for our next step. I use the tracing paper and this magazine, and I cut out the middle of the front cover because it was so colorful and pretty. Um, now, I won't use all of this. What I'll do is make a nice composition, and I've included this or this gourd and this uh, gourd here, and then some of these, and I've added another pumpkin similar to this above this so that I ended up with a nicer um, composition. So, and then I just traced them out and added this pumpkin. Now you don't have to do that. You can trace just what you see and, and so much of it, whatever you want. Um, but then I just added a little bit of uh, leaves in the foreground um, so that we'll have some green around the, the pumpkins. And then in the background of these, I don't know what they are, but they're, they're nice looking. They're some type of berry. So, um, and I just cut it out the size that I wanted, the uh, five by seven. It just happened to be the right size, but you can always um, enlarge it on your copier or um, decrease the size of it if you need it. But this just happened to be a nice scene that I could make a good composition out of, which is kind of rare to find that. But um, now we're ready to pull this up. And I'll move this out of the way. And I need to kind of smooth background here, so I'll use the back of this and I'm going to scribble all over what I did here, what I drew, so that I can transfer this. I'm making my own transfer here. I can transfer it right onto the watercolor paper. cover it pretty good and then get your piece of watercolor paper. I'm going to use the better stuff today, uh, the 140 pound arches um, cold press and then um, take the pencil and then you would go over everything that you traced here. And then it would transfer to the paper. Okay. Okay, so now we have our drawing transferred to the paper that we're going to use. And it is going to be 5 by 7 when I cut it down. But here's my reference. And I added another pumpkin back here. It's just a little difference. And then I omitted or deleted some of the things back there. Um, so I have my palette here. 
And what I do is I always make my little puddles first. And I'm gonna show you how to make one of these puddles. Um, I've already made these colors and I just use the colors that I'm gonna use in the painting. Um, I'm still gonna make a blue. So what I do is put some water on my palette and then I get into the paint. Now I have wet all of these paints ahead of time. Um, sprayed them with water so that they wouldn't be so dry so they're easier to use. And let's get some dark blue in there also. So I have a nice deep blue. And your colors are going to vary from mine probably so whatever you whatever you have, whatever colors that you like you can use but um, I'd say play with different colors with different paintings and you'll come up with colors that you really like and generally we tend to uh, go to certain colors that we personally like and um, these are a lot of the colors that I use and I mostly use Holbein paints some some are um, let's see Windsor Cotman I think they are for very reasonable in price um, but this is going to be a wet on wet in some areas so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to um, I'm going to start by wetting the background and I my brush off and that one little place that's clean. I'm going to just put the water where I want my background to be. And it's okay if I um, make it larger than it is because it's going to be cut down. This is just clean water for the background. And this is uh, 140 paper, like I said, 140 pounds, so it's not going to curl up on me very much at all. And let's just get some water and it's okay if you have some light spots like here um, I kind of like that it brings light into the, the painting now I would I do want to say that less is more the more I brush my strokes on here the more my colors are not gonna come out very vivid um, and they'll be muddier. So I try to use as little strokes as possible when I'm when I'm painting because watercolor is really beautiful if you just kind of lay it in instead of brushing it in. I want my background to be kind of dark maybe. And it dries a lot different than what you're seeing here. Now I'm going to lay some colors in next to this that are going to be blending into it. I'm going to go for some green here. I'll just kind of lay that in there. You see, one stroke at a time. See, I'm pushing down my brush so that it's not just not just using the little tiny tip like that I'm pushing it down so I get a wider stroke and now I'm going to use a little bit of brown to kind of make that green really dark see how nice that is and I want some some depth some dark back here right so these really pop out a little bit on the pumpkin we didn't want that and even uh, some really dark dark blue I might want to put some of that in there you see I'm just kind of popping it in there I'm not um, not really oh well we'll do away with that berry make it smaller <laughs> not a problem but I want some dark back here that's why I'm doing this Okay, now don't want to overdo it, so I'm going to leave it um, and let this dry, and then we'll come back to this. We have the background dry. I did wet on wet technique, so um, that's pretty dry, and, and I like it okay. Um, let's see. Now we're going to, I'm going to work on this pumpkin or gourd or whatever you call these things. I guess they're gourds, um, and this one together because they're very close in color, and I just want to get that base color of this um very pale yellow. So uh, let me grab my water over here. Put it back here. And it's clean now, so I can. You always want your water to be nice and clean when you're using yellow. So I want to add a lot of water to it 
because it's a, a pale, very pale yellow. And I'm not going to use the wet on wet technique with this one. I'm just going to kind of go around these um, little nodules here so that they can be lighter, um, like a white, really, and kind of give it some texture here. Um, just kind of making some circles because we have those circles there. Um, but towards this pumpkin, it's going to be darker because we're in the shadow area. So <clears throat> first I'm going to get all this on here, all this yellow color like that. And, you know, when I see circles, I just kind of work in a circular motion. Now, while that's wet, while that's still wet, I want to get some dark um, shadows in here. So I'm going to use some orange for the shadow because as you see it here, there is some orange in there. And then maybe a little more yellow just in the shadow. So deeper yellow. I'll pick that up. And then maybe just a tad bit of brown. And as you can see, I'm still just laying these colors in. I'm not really, when I'm doing the shadow, I'm just kind of laying it down here. You don't want it too dark because this other is really pale. <clears throat> and then maybe a couple of little things like that that are kind of coming down from this. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna leave that just like that. Now this pumpkin back here, I can work on because it's not touching this one. I don't wanna work on this one yet because if I start putting wet in here, this is just all gonna blend together. So I'm gonna work on this pumpkin over here and I'm gonna have this one very orange and this one is going to be pretty much the same color as this and here in the base color would be this bright or very pale yellow so i'm going to do this one a lot more orange it's because i like this color contrast in here so let's start working on that and i'm just going to pick up some orange and i'm going to have a highlight um i see where my light's coming from so it's going to be on the top right side I guess so my I know my highlights here are gonna be on the top right so I'm gonna leave some some highlights out for that maybe right here again this is not wet on wet this is just wet on dry paper and let's see Try not to run over that pumpkin too much. And I'm gonna highlight in here, maybe like that. And these creases are gonna be darker, so I can just kind of go over all that. And now there won't be a highlight over here, so. But it will be a darker orange, so I'll keep that in mind and work on some, pick up some more pigment than I did on the right side. some darker and then lighten up a little bit a little more water just for back in here now I can touch the background as long as it's dry but if it were wet this blue and green orange would be really um, combining together and making brown so all right, so we'll let this dry and then we'll move on. Okay, now I'm painting the berries because the pumpkin has dried and I can go right up next to that now because it is dry. And I'm not forgetting my highlights now and the little berries. So this is the next step. Don't worry about being perfect. Leaving some little highlights. Now, while these are wet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and rinse it out my brush, and I'm going to grab some of this orange and yellow, and I'm just going to touch these berries with this. And it's amazing what will happen when this is dry. 
um, you'll see some nice bright yellow and oranges in there along with that red. So. Okay, now uh, we're going to do this pumpkin here, and I'm going to do a bit of wet on this one because um, it's going to be done in two stages. I'm going to go back and put the orange in, like these little um, areas here and all the spots. So I'm going to wet the whole pumpkin. Try not to go outside the lines very much at all. And then I've already made my puddle up for my yellow, so I'm going to kind of lay that in. A little darker on the left side. Now this, this watercolor will dry uh, like 50% lighter than when you put it on wet. Get some darker here on this side. And you don't have to worry about going exactly like your picture. Um, as I heard another artist say one time uh, when she was water, teaching a watercolor class, she said, don't let the truth get in the way of a good painting. So I always thought that was kind of neat. Make your own thing out of it. Okay, and we'll wait for that to dry. So in order to keep this highlight that's right in here in the, the um, reference, I'm going to take my paper towel and kind of dab while it's still wet out some of the, the paint. So I just let us left a subtle highlight there. And that's one way to leave a highlight. All right now, I uh, uh, made my little puddles over here with um, some, this is dark blue, like a Prussian blue and uh, the green here. and. Green, blue, and yes, brown, the burnt umber. And it makes a really dark, dark green. And that's what I want to put in between. Now that all of this is dry, I can actually add these things in. And I just want to add some darks um, to really make these berries pop out um, right now. So I'm gonna just keep adding some darks. And as I paint this, I really just think to myself stems and leaves and, um, you know, so when you think about this kind of things, then you're going to get these certain shapes in your mind. And we want to add some of the darks in the centers of these little berries also, because they are about the same color. <clears throat> and I'll put them in. Some of them have a little round dot in the middle that might have a little highlight on them. So we don't want to color in everything. We can actually leave some kind of little white spots in some of them. And then darks. There's some more back here. And I'm thinking, you know, the shapes of leaves as I do this. I might not always come out with those shapes, but um, that's what I'm thinking as I paint it. Whatever I paint, if I'm painting a pumpkin, I actually think of a real pumpkin in my mind at the same time. Now I'm going to go around the bottom of this pumpkin because in the reference it has it, it's really dark under here and it, it just makes it pop out so much better when you get those darks in. Now that's not really dark enough so I'm going to add some more really dark blue and green and some more brown to it. Lots of pigment here so that you see the difference there. As I was doing it, I just saw that it just wasn't coming out dark enough. Really kind of going underneath that, that pumpkin so that it really pops out good. And then down here is going to be some leaves and um, just underneath the right side of a lot of these. Just really make them pop by putting the darks in. And then while that's wet, you really want to... Um, rinse your brush off a little bit and get some nice green in here while this is wet so it will actually blend in and and look like foliage in here but you want to do it while they're wet just kind of fill in some of the holes here with the greens 
and the browns. Just place it in there. Don't really do dots, but don't um, make it look like you're just trying to color like on a coloring page or something. Kind of an organized mess back there. <laughs> And then I'll get some more bright green while this is still wet and kind of get some leafy things coming out from the pumpkin. Some bigger than others, don't make them all the same. That's hard not to do though. So if you want to draw them first, you can do that. I'm just thinking leaves as I go along. And, and then maybe use the tip of my brush and kind of get some little uh, wiry things going on. Just some vines, I guess you would call them if you're in the pumpkin patch. Grab lots of paint. Don't be afraid to load your, your brush up with paint. You just don't want to use like a dry brush. And if it doesn't come out exactly like you think it should, we can always let this dry and then go back over it with some more leaves that are more defined and some more curly cues. There's always things you can change later on in watercolor. Okay, and that's good for now. I have let it all dry. I let it dry in between each thing that I do mostly. And we're going to get some lines in this background pumpkin here. I have my little puddles all ready to go. Let's make this a little darker. It's on the left side so our, our light is coming from the right side so a little bit darker and then I'm going to take a paper towel and just kind of give it a little bit of a highlight so it's not so dark and then <clears throat> come over here come back here with this line and we'll see how that comes out when it's dry. And then we're going to do the orange spots on this one. So you come up here like that. And we got some spots here. Doesn't have to be exactly like the picture, but kind of nice to just dab those in and um, give it some other spots in here. Here. Now these I'm going to make a little bit lighter by adding a little bit more water to it because they are on the, the side that's highlighted by the light. So I'll just lighten that side up a little bit. spots here. Don't try to make them the same shape. Just kind of turn your brush around sometimes. Use a lighter touch instead of using the same old shape on every dot. And it kind of looks formulated. There we go. And for now that looks okay I think. Alright then, till the next step. All right, I'm gonna brighten up my um, berries. They're, they kind of look plain, so what I'm gonna do is around the bottom, I'm really gonna add some 
bright orange and red. I really got a lot of pigment on the brush, so and so it'll cover and really make them stand out. And then maybe a little bit of detail like this and some starburst coming out from that center. Just to brighten them up a little bit. They got kind of uh, faded. So we're going to go in and add more paint, add more pigment, and make it a lot brighter. Okay. All right, so now we're going to work on these stems. I went over them with a little bit of light brown first and then dabbed it so it wasn't so dark, and now I'm just kind of giving them some some detail now this one and now this one is really dark back here and I want some really dark down next to the bottom of it side because our our light is on the right and then I'm gonna take my berries and put some green into them really really dark green um, on the left side to make them pop and not just a circle around them but some leaf-like shapes. It just makes them really stand out against that nice uh, red there. So again, a little bit of dark in here. This makes things really pop. And you don't want just a line around there. You want it to kind of look leafy and maybe some more of those squigglies in here. with the very tip of your brush, which should be really a, um, a nice point. This brush has been used quite a bit, you can see. Now I'm going with the black, the really dark that I made. I don't use black right out of the tube because it just doesn't have any color in it. I mix my own black with dark green and uh, dark blue and a red and I put some burnt umber in there. If you mix all these dark colors together, you get a really nice black with lots of color in it. And then that's what you want to use for the dark. Okay, we'll let that dry. Okay, so now we're ending the painting and I just want to put some a little bit of color down here at the bottom to finish it off and maybe draw some of that orange, um, pull some of this color down into the into the green. Add a little bit of green like this. Just soften. It's really soft. And then I'll just grab some of the yellow orange and just kind of touch it. Like a reflection. Maybe a little bit of just a little red over here. This will dry a lot better. Um, and then up a little bit of that. This kind of gives it some color to end off, end up with, and then I'm going to brighten up this pumpkin right here at the bottom of it with some yellow. I don't know if you can see that. Just kind of dab it a little bit. Gives it just a little bit of a bump with color at the bottom, brightens it up. I like bright color. Some people would have liked it the way it was, but I always add a little bit of extra color in the end, just to make things interesting. Bring some of that down. Okay, and then there's my painting. Joy Slap Art Studio. Thanks for watching.